So we got to see a little bit about time anxiety, and we saw a little bit about Shima's past, so that was very fun. I wonder what we're going to see in this episode. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. But we are going to get started. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Oh, sports. God, she's got fangs. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, we know how athletic Mitsumi is. Well, you know, they are keeping her on her toes, that's for sure. <laughs> Right, the two previous times she thought about slacking off, they they rein her back in. Oh, table tennis. Dude, pick volleyball. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> She's so upset. Unhealthiest lifestyle without school sports? Alright, hold on. <laughs> I mean, he already saw how you fucking ran. I. I <laughs> just <laughs> really thinks. Well, it's because of him, of course. <laughs> Mitsumi is just in the back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so that is Mika. I was just like, she had, she, she was literally on a ponytail. I'm just like, who is this? <laughs> To snacks. Small lunch. Not a big eater, huh? Okay. He accepts you for who you are. Oh. 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 Mmm. Just me throughout the entire Mika stuff. <laughs> yeah, the only reason why she's doing this is. Uh oh. Oh, is this some boys playing basketball? Their shoes have blue highlights. Well, hopefully, uh, you don't get hit by a basketball. Oh! Damn, dude, that was a big push! Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, just gonna stand up for you. <laughs> oh, ah, of course, of course. Wow. <laughs> the list of Mika. <laughs> she's only she's yeah, na learn the name of those people who piss her off. <laughs> the FOMO! <laughs> yeah, they kind of renew that. Uh, yeah, we know. 
or a pure straightforward person. <gasps> because you're my friend! I guess I've always been nasty to you. Yeah, I thought we're friends. You're the first girl who asked for her contacts. <laughs> All these are being truthful, huh? You never lied to me. You just didn't mince words. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, she has been improving, so. And it shows all acknowledging her efforts. Ah! Ah, my Kokoro! <laughs> I'm just here to heckle. <laughs> Seems like you're not here to heckle anymore, huh? You've got a job now. I only play to win. <gasps> yeah, hell yeah, dude. Come on now! Yeah, just let her be excited! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! I don't know, I kind of like the top knot a little bit better, but I also have a lack of fashion, so. <laughs> Aim for gold! Damn! Meanwhile, Kurume. <laughs> Oh, she still practiced. Oh my god, pickled veggies. Oh! It's gotta be crowded. Busy. Oh, we're all on Twitter. Hold on, I gotta go read those in a bit. 30% cooler? Oh my god, he's athletic and nice and hot. Oh my god. Even the upperclassmen. Damn. Fucking smooth. Oh, he gave and he gave him the basketball to Oh no. The rich gets richer. Oh, and then Mika looks. Mm-hmm. She's learning. <gasps> oh shit! An angel! <laughs> Look at him, surrounded by- by girls! Because he's popular, huh? Of course, of course. A lot of people put him on pedestals. And you? Hey, you're the one who treated him like he was a normal person. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh no, they're adversary! Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god, yeah, she's serious when they fucking got that! Ooh! Damn! Exactly! If you've got a weak link!
7-Eleven. <gasps> Second place. Oh. That's right. Did your best. <laughs> you know, other girls, they did give him some other things, you know? Maybe some flowers, maybe some, uh... Some water or whatever, right? But not Mitsumi. <laughs> have some pickled vegetables. Honestly, if somebody gave me pickled vegetables, I'd be like, hell yeah. I love pickled vegetables. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, I was making a joke in uh, the latest uh, episode that came up today, which is episode three, where I wrote in the comments and said like, oh, I don't care about the Yuri ship. I just want more Mika. And then here we are with more Mika. <laughs> Yes, I got what I wanted. <laughs> now I can just talk about the entire episode about her but for the rest of the discussion. <laughs> All right, that should be it. Oh God, no, I paused it wrongly and now it's taken me to the next episode. I don't, stop, ah, the beach. Oh my God, I can't believe it. There's a beach episode. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> oh, I don't know, maybe it might not be a beach episode. But okay, I, there was some, uh, uh I, I was too busy, uh, getting distracted on this last part. And I was not really paying attention to what Mika was talking about. So when you fall in love, sometimes it's because you find something in them that you don't have. Okay? They make you whole, right? That, that whole feeling, I suppose. And maybe, just maybe, she has that, right? Whatever it is Shima-kun wish he had, Mitsumi has. So he kind of... She might just have it. <laughs> A dream. <laughs> Alright. That's the feeling I get. Okay, so that's her talking about how she basically knows that Shima is, you know, probably in love with her. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. That's nice, that's nice. Okay, uh, there's this one other thing before I go and write my notes that I wanted to look at, and that is the, the text, eh? The, the text stuff. Uh, they're, they're on the, the Twitter and all that, right? Let's see. Class match, boys, cool. So that's <laughs> the relating keywords. This is what he's searching on on Twitter. He's fucking eagle surfing, dude. Our class got first year, uh, first place in our year. The boys usually suck, but they were cool out there. Good job, guys. We did win our match, but it was so much fun. The boys were so cool out there. Okay. Today was the last day of class matches. The normally stupid ass boys were so cool. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's no fair. LOL. The girls were totally amped up too. <laughs> and that's why Yamada is just over here like, Oh, I hear that. Uh, you got your, your coolness goes up by 30%. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to go write my notes and we'll be right back to the center. All right. So that was episode five of Skip and Loafer. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was what a great episode. We had a whole, we had more of a Mika focus episode. Fantastic. I love it. 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, let's let, let let's talk about let's talk about Mika, right? Yeah, I I love talking about Mika. <laughs> so for Mika, I I kind of had the suspicion that the the whole thing about her insecurity was going to be about her weight because uh, you know unfortunately we we live in a fat phobic world. And if you're in Japan, that that fat phobic kind of kind of doubles in size, right? So it's 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 very hard for uh, women or girls who are even just a little bit overweight to be able to uh, feel like they're desirable by the the general public, right? So uh, so so I kind of had that idea that this was what is going to be for for Mika's backstory. And so, 
It is, and it's very understandable why this is the way that she is. Because as I was talking about in the in the, is it the previous episode? Or is it episode three? I think it's episode three, where Mika kind of gets a feeling of uh, she she pushes down her insecurity by uh, by forcing it onto other people, or the, sorry, by putting other people down, right, in order to feel better about herself. And uh, with the way that we know about her past, I would assume because of her weight, she got put down a lot when she was in elementary, right? And and so because of that, she kind of internalizes that and, and, and repackages it for herself and pushes that onto other people, right? Since she gets pushed down, she's decided that she's going to push other people down instead, right? And, 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 and from the way that she sees it, right? In the world of glam glamorous people or g glamorous clubs or, or whatever, these are the people who she wants to become, but at the same time, she had felt that they have looked down upon her. And so, uh, again, when, when she finally feels like she's able to uh, put all this effort and she's finally now here with the glamorous people, right? The glamorous people who had previously put her down, but now that she's at the same it it level as they are, she's doing exactly the same thing as these glamorous people have done to her in the past towards other people, right? Specifically from what we see with, uh, with, with Mitsumi and also just the way that she thinks. Uh, when, when she saw Mitsumi's uh, fashion sense and she saw Kurume's fashion sense before that all got shattered by Yuzuki. So, very, very, very nice, right? I, 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 I mean, it's not nice, but... <laughs> It's just nice to be able to see the inner workings of uh, of Mika and, again, why she is the way that she is. Very much enjoy that. So going back to not the beginning, but the beginning of the time we see Mika, right? We, we know that Mitsumi, is uh, she sucks at sports and she's got the whole idea that she's so good at hiding things when in reality she she's not good at hiding things, right? It's, it's like that whole feeling of her family and her friend Fumi knows that when she, when she, they know that she's trying to hide something when she's feeling sad or whatever because she doesn't want to burden them or she doesn't want to make them feel uh, feel sad or worry about her. And she thinks, and Mitsumi thinks, that she does such a great job in hiding that shit, but again, her friend and her family already fucking knows. <laughs> and so this is, uh, this kind of continues with that whole point with everybody already knowing that Mitsumi sucks at sports, but Mitsumi is just like, God, I'm such a fucking genius, dude. I'm such a goddamn pro at hiding how badly I suck at sports. <laughs> but because of that, Mitsumi uh, decided that she needed to get help from Mika who is only doing this because she gets to spend time with Chima because, you know, he's he he's a hot guy. And if she wants to be in with the glamorous people, it, you know, she should try and get in with the, with, with the resident hot guy. <laughs> so, understandable. And so in the next scene, after all of the montages that we have, but honestly, I kind of don't really mind too much of the montage because it's sports related and I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> As long as you don't start showing me montages of just sceneries. <laughs> but here we have in this scene that starts to uh, get us to connect the dots, right? About her, her insecurity that connects to her whole weight issue. Where Mitsumi give gifts from Naochan to Mika and Shima. Where on the, the, the inside is just a bunch of sweet junk, as she says. And Mika decides that she's only going to take a drink. And that makes, uh, what is it, that makes Mitsumi think about the portion of, uh, uh Mitsumi, it makes Mitsumi think about Mika's portion and how she eats small portions for her lunch, or, and as Shima says, a girly girl's lunch. And we, we hear the first part, which is Mika, uh, she says that she gains weight easily, and so because of that, she has to control herself, right? The, the, the first whole thing about, uh, her, her weight issue. That reminds me, there's this part of the topic that I'm still kind of don't understand where Shima says, bet it was a culture shock for the guys who got school lunches. A and then Mitsumi says, surprise me too, everyone has big appetites where I'm from. So I guess like the guys who came to the school, they got a culture shock because they had smaller lunches. I suppose that's, 
Okay. And so while they're having this conversation, we've got Mika who is thinking in her head, right? That Shima is still an enigma, but it really looks like he really is just a nice person. And she goes and she's like, wow, lucky you, Mitsumi, right? Lucky you, you've never had to deny yourself your favorite food or and she never had to fight her way into a glamorous club or surround herself with glamorous people. That all just accumulates to the last part of what she says, which is you haven't had to put in all that effort. And that, uh, that kind of goes to the idea of, well, you're so uh, Mika anyways, but to other people too, right? Where you're so stuck in your own problems that you don't realize that other people have issues as well. And we've kind of have seen Mitsumi's issues throughout this whole thing because, well, we're, for the most part, we're, we're an omniscient god <laughs> and we're able to just go into people's minds and just figure out what the fuck they're what the fuck they're thinking right but mika doesn't have that ability she's not an omniscient reader <laughs> she's not an omniscient god so she can't just burrow into people's mind and understand their their struggles and everything right so mika is just so full up of her own issues of her own insecurities that she doesn't think about other people's insecurities and it, it, it's kind of like that issue in uh, Insomniacs After School with our main guy who uh, had thought about how everybody's living such a good life while he's out here suffering and not being able to sleep because of his insomnia, right? Before he ends up meeting... Uh, it's so funny that for some reason, my... my <laughs> the names of the characters for, from Insomniac has just... Uh, has just been wiped from my mind right now and the only person that I'm remembering is fucking Connie. Why? <laughs> I know why. It's because Connie is is quite similar to Mika and all I'm thinking about in my head is God, I wish we had an episode of, of, of Connie like this, but you know, my, my, my whole gripe about Insomniacs after school is, is the fact that there's just been, a, that there's just a lack of variety in terms of like side, in terms of showing us more of the side characters. But yeah, I won't get too much into that. But yeah, it is that same feeling, right? Where you're suffering, you feel like you're the only person in the world suffering while everybody else is having such a good time and you're not. And uh, it kind of uh, made me think about uh, <laughs> about this, right? When Mitsumi, uh, sorry, when Mika talks about how she, you, she's never, uh, Mitsumi's never had to deny herself her favorite food. And then we, we kind of just see junk food, right? Chocolate, candy, french fries, hamburgers, or cheeseburgers, technically. I was thinking about how that's probably just the difference between living in a city compared to living in a a, a a fucking town that's like in in the buck of nowhere right where there's probably just a bunch of farming fields and everything there's going to be different types of food and especially if you're in the city there's going to be a whole lot more junk food there's going to be a whole lot more fast food for you to come in and indulge yourself in all these in all these junk right while Mitsumi it has been living in rural in the rural area where there's a lot more farmers and you could kind of see it when Fumi was coming on over to visit her family and she was giving her family asparagus. I think that's what it was. It was some giant ass asparagus like here have some vegetables. So the difference, right, between living in the city and living in the rules, I, I think Mitsumi, despite her uh, also saying that, oh, everybody's got a big appetite where I was. Well, despite them having that big appetite, they're probably eating much healthier food than, than the people who are living in the city, right, who are just consuming a lot more fast food than, uh, than the people in the rural area would, especially if they don't have these sort of like fast food places, right? We heard from Mitsumi saying that, well, there's a, there, there was a Starbucks. I forgot what they called it, but you know, there was a Starbucks close to her, but by close, I mean like, it's like an hour or two far, far apart, right? That's a, that, that, that's not within walking distance. So that doesn't really get Mitsumi to actually want to go and travel there while here in the city, she's able to just go to this place easily within walking distance or through through Japan's great fucking train system and everything. The, the, the access to these junk food, the, the access to the, all these bad food is so much easier. And so, <laughs> basically, I'm just saying it's, you know, difference in, in cities and, and rural areas and all that. So, 
you know, the, these are the issues that Mitsumi has never really felt before, right? But doesn't mean that it invalidates her issues or Mik Mika's issues, right? That both of them are suffering through different issues, right? With, uh, with Mitsumi having literally the burden of people on her shoulders even though she says that you're like oh i'm i'm doing this for myself and, and you know it's good to have friends and family who supports me but again that's a lot of pressure on your fucking shoulder as she says she's her town her hometown's prodigy right everybody is expecting great things from her that's a lot of fucking pressure and that's just a whole different issue with, uh, uh, compared to Mika. But again, there's still very much issues with each other, and I, I personally feel like people's issues shouldn't really be on the... I mean, okay, if if we're, like, high top level, you know, if there's, like, a really big difference, I can kind of see, like, maybe some people's issues might be a little bit worse, but I, I really don't like it. I don't know where I went <laughs> when I, I, I've, I'm about to start ranting about people who fucking thinks that having their issues should also uh, uh, who, who who thinks that they should go into a fucking dick size competition about their issues right like oh you've got these issues well my issues are even worse than you and, and anyways I'm, I'm not gonna go into that whole fucking rant <laughs> but I, I hope you you understand what what i mean by that right the people who just like oh fucking uh, you know, oh, you're you're suffering uh, about these. It, it, it's also that whole feeling of like, oh, first world problems, right? Oh, well, you're complaining about your computer's not working. Well, look at the fucking children in Africa. They don't even got food or internet. Or, or, I mean, I would assume they do have. But I mean, I don't know about like the the. Okay, I'm gonna assume they have internet as well. Okay, so I know that they do. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of feels like that 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 whole feeling sometimes, but. All right, I'll, I'll probably just write it better in the description or something if I remember. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? <laughs> in the next scene, uh, we've got Shima, who uh, he's not going to be here, right? So of course we got a low, uh, some alone time between Mitsumi and Mika, and we've got these third-year boys who are playing in the gym despite, well, they're they're not supposed to be here. Right? It's supposed to be only the first years, and this guy really be out here just bumping the fuck out of Mika is a good thing that she's able to catch herself or else she would just landed flat on her face or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, good thing she's able to catch herself. What does this guy say? Where do you think you're throwing it, man? My bad, it slipped out. They didn't even, they didn't even apologize to her. Like, what a fucking, what a fucking assholes. <laughs> And we see that even though Mika was pissed, she probably wasn't going to say, uh, she probably wasn't going to talk uh, to, to the third years. But here is Mitsumi, who sees that, well, her, her, her friend got pushed and they didn't fucking apologize. But so, and they're, they're not even supposed to be here. All right, so even though she's scared, even though the, the third years are scary people, she decides that she's going to announce the law. She's going to declare that this is the rule for today. <laughs> and the third years, he's just like, whatever, I don't give a shit. He just continues with his uh, endeavor, even though he's out here breaking the rules. And this gets Mika to, to have fucking flashbacks to her elementary days, where she says, it's back. I haven't had this feeling in a while. And I wonder what this feeling is, right? Is it the feeling of powerlessness? The feeling of not being listened to, right? It seems like here in this situation, she's just out here sweeping and all the other boy and the two boys are just i would assume they're playing and perhaps she had told them hey maybe we should uh you know start fucking cleaning up and then they didn't listen to her right that feeling of powerlessness that feeling of not being listened to so perhaps that's the sort of feeling i i i, I would assume if it's not you know let, let me know <laughs> Anyways, we've got a third year who came in to toss the other two boys out, and here we see the difference between Mitsumi and Mika, right? As, uh, <laughs> as Mika says, she puts people on her shit list. It's a mental notepad containing a, a, a list of all names who dared to get on at Mika's bad side, right? The list of Mika. <laughs> Meanwhile, here is uh, Mitsumi, who remembers the name of the guy who was being nice, right? Who was being kind, a guy who was actually following the rule. And so here's Mika with her crumpled fist saying, that's the difference between us. 
while I learn the name of people who piss me off, Mitsumi remembers the name of someone who was kind to her. I, they, they both look at two very different things. And I, I think Mitsumi, even though she does get a little bit sad sometimes and she gets lifted uh, back up uh, by Fumi, she's quite the uh, optimist. Optimist? She's optimistic. <laughs> While Mika is more pessimistic. And that kind of goes with the way that the both of them were treated when they were kids, right? And how the both of them have gone on different paths because of their childhood. It's very nice, right? We know Mitsumi has had a very good relationship with her family, with her friends. She's very close with Fumi and we, <laughs> you know, I, I'm over here fucking crying about a great support system, aka Fumi. So, you know, that's, that's what Mitsumi has had throughout her entire life. And Mika, even though we've don't really know if she's had any friends or anything like that. I would assume not just the way that she, just the way that she acts, uh, <laughs> just on the way that she acts, right? So it, it, it's just nice to see Mitsumi is the person who got built up by her friends and family, while Mika was the person who got tore down by the people around her. And so that's, the, that's how the both of them are functioning, right? Because of that, Mika, when she thinks about things, she thinks about it negatively, and she only she only remembers the name of the people who've wronged her. While Mitsumi, she is able to see the lighter th side of things because that's how she was raised, and she remembers the name of the people who was kind to her instead of thinking about the people who, who brings negativity into her life. So, very nice, very nice. That leads us onto the next part where, let's see, <laughs> and also, still can't get over it. Yuzuki's just out here with the fucking FOMO. <laughs> Fantastic. And I love that Yuzuki and Kurume are just always hanging out with one another. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Anyways, uh, this goes on to Mika having yet another one of her thoughts where she says, I'm not a thinking beauty or a pure straightforward person. And God, it just gets so so the feeling of uh, being behind uh, being behind a group, right? Being the last person walking, and and her thinking, who in the world is ever going to choose me, right? And we start thinking about her elementary days again, where she's uh, she's sitting all alone, and everybody else is uh, is having fun off doing other things, right? So. I guess that also answers my question of she probably didn't have any friends. And, ah, uh, it's just, it's, it's just sad, right? It's, it's just sad. The feeling of worthlessness, the feeling of, uh, being undesirable. And it, uh, again, kind of goes back to the whole fat phobic and, and how it's very much that in Japan, right? It's, you're like one pound off in Japan and suddenly you're fucking fat. And it's just like, well, shit. <laughs> right? But it, it, it's also overall kind of the feel in like Asian culture uh, overall. I don't know why I felt like I had more stuff to talk about for Mika. But then the moment I just went to like my first discussion point, I felt like I had already said all that I needed to say. <laughs> why am I even here right now? But after this scene, uh, we, uh, we've got Mika uh, finally coming and asking Mitsumi why she, why, why she came to her, right? Like Yuzuki used to be on the, I think that's Yuzuki, right? Mura, Murashige? She's saying that, uh, God, do I have Yuzuki's name in here? Yeah, it is. Okay, so Murashige. So that is uh, Yuzuki. So yeah, she says Yuzuki used to play in volleyball as well. So why didn't you just ask Yuzuki? Why did you ask me specifically? Right? I've been an asshole towards you. I, I, I've been harsh. And, and you know, we're, we're, I, I've, perhaps we're not really on good terms. So, like, why of all people, why did you ask me? And I, I love Mitsumi's response in this. Right? With, <laughs> with, with Mitsumi going and says, like, well, yeah, I, th I, I think that you were a bit harsh at times. Right? So, understandable. But, looking back... You never lied to me. You just didn't mince words. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know about. I don't know. I don't know about the never lying part, but. 
to reach their own. Uh, but since she doesn't mince words, uh, Mitsumi figured that uh, Mika wasn't going to sugarcoat things with volleyball. Uh, because perhaps if she had asked Yuzuki to do it, Yuzuki would have been a lot nicer to her compared to Mika, who's just like, all right, you fucking suck. Let's, let's get this done, right? <laughs> let's get this improvement done. Well, Yuzuki... Uh, probably, as what Mitsumi said, perhaps she probably could have sugar- would have sugarcoated it for her. I- I really like that this is Mitsumi's response. I like that she- uh, uh, I, I like that she says, you know, there's more to teaching than simply answering questions. And that you're a great teacher. You- you did teach me well. And she goes and says, you've really- you've worked really hard to get this good, you know? Uh, <laughs> And, and, and it, it and it shows, and it's the it, it's it's the acknowledgement, right? It's it's the acknowledgement that 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 all this hard work that she's been putting in, that nobody has seen her done these hard, uh, no, nobody has seen her put in all this effort, which is why she go, uh, which is why she had that mindset in the beginning of the episode where she was thinking like, oh, she. Uh, Mitsumi's never had to do this, 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 and this, right? She never had to put effort in her in, in her life for once, <laughs> right? Because uh, Mika just uh, all her her whole life she just desperately wants someone to acknowledge her, and, and it's just you know that's uh, uh, acknowledging someone that that really that 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 really empowers people a lot of the times, right? And and again, that's just something that Mika never really got, and that's something that Mitsumi has probably gone a lot because again, she's she's got a good support system. <laughs> I don't know about Mika. Maybe Mika's families, maybe they've got maybe maybe they're supportive of her as well. I don't know. I don't know if they're talking about her weight or whatever. But we did kind of see this one part of the flashback where like it looks like someone's offering her some cake, and she's just like, no, no cake. <laughs> So I don't know, you know, maybe her, her family would have been fine if she was the way that she is, but she ended up changing because of society. Who knows? Who knows? But I do enjoy that after Mitsumi acknowledges Mika's effort, she goes and says that, uh, well, I'm not talking about your personality, all right? <laughs> you know I'm not praising your personality, right? <laughs> the savagery, dude. The utter savagery. But uh, th this goes back to what I was talking about. Well, not what I was talking. What am I even talking about? I'm everywhere. But uh, it, it goes uh, going back to what Mitsumi was saying about Mika. It, it basically, it, it it just encapsulates what I love about these types of characters, right? Uh, with Mitsumi saying that, well, Mika doesn't mince words, so she won't sugarcoat their uh she, she won't sugarcoat things in their practice right she's going to say it even if it's a little bit mean even if it's a little bit hurtful <laughs> so I, I i love that that is a great response and i i fully agree with mitsumi and again this is the big reasons why i love these types of characters right i i i as much as you know, I have such a love-hate relationship with Kari from Insomnia After School. I still like her character. Al Albiet, she's sometimes a little bit of a... She was a little bit of a Debbie Downer in the first few episodes, but whatever, right? <laughs> I did say I've forgiven her of her sins now that she's a Sundere. Now that I know she's a Sundere. <laughs> Mika was a little bit of a Sundere this episode, too. But yeah, that's why I like characters. Uh, my, my two most prominent characters that I often think about uh, when it comes to giving examples, right? I, I love characters like uh, Victoria. Is that what her name is? Victoria from Life is Strange. Uh, I love Emily from uh, Until Dawn. And there's a... Uh, God, I, I can't remember what her name is. I'm gonna go search it up. But she's from Buddy Daddies, right? Misaki. That's her name. Misaki. I... I <laughs> I love these types of characters. I uh, and 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 again, what Mitsumi says encapsulates what I what I love about these types of characters. Because despite their insecurities, they're 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 very much able to say what they're thinking, and they don't care. For the most part, they don't care what other people think about them. And that goes to the idea of the power of words, right? You can word things a little bit better. But they don't. They just say what they want to say. 
even though they're a little bit riddled by their insecurities. All right, I've got distracted. What was I talking about again? Oh, these types of characters, right? Yeah, they, they don't mince their words. There's another character that I'm thinking about right now. Uh, it's from a silent voice. Ah, yes, Nauka Ueno. Ueno? Ueno. Okay. Yeah, that character. I, I, I love her as a character. Uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be near her. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to touch her even with a 10 inch stick. <laughs> But I like her as a character, and I I always feel a little sad that she gets a lot of uh, she gets a lot of hate, especially if you're only if if you've only ever seen the the, the movie for the, a silent voice and you haven't read the manga. But all I'm gonna say is that your anger is misplaced. All right, your your anger is misplaced. You all should be fucking hate hating on Miki. All right, I fucking hate her. <laughs> God, and if I have to go on a rant between those two, god damn, dude, there's, you know, the, at least the one nice thing that I can count on when it comes for Ueno, now got Ueno, is that she's gonna tell me what the fuck is on her mind, and she's not gonna give a shit about what people are thinking, for the most part. She still has her own insecurities as well. <laughs> but, at the very least, I know that what she's saying is the truth, or, or, or the truth of what she feels. Unlike someone like Miki, all right, who who hides behind her 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 cute her, her cutesy low happy voice, yeah, you know, her her happy attitude, not happy cutesy happy innocent attitude. There you go, all right. I all right, all right. I don't want to go on a rant about how much I fucking hate Miki and how much I feel like people just need to hate on Miki more. <laughs> but you know, if, if I had to have a choice of Having to befriend someone who doesn't mince their words can be very, can be quite mean, but in the end, they're very truthful to how they feel. Versus someone who wears a mask and it is, it, it has no qualms in tossing you under the bus if they're, if they feel like their reputation that they're, that they've built ha is, is beginning to crumble. I don't want that person. All right. I don't want that person. And also some some other personal shit that makes me not really like these sort of people. But I feel like you shouldn't like these sort of people in the first place, you know. But I I understand, you know. You've you've got to put on a mask sometimes, and that kind of goes back to uh, to Yuri is my job, <laughs> my favorite tsundere. <laughs> Right with uh, with Yano, right? She 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 doesn't mince her words either, and because of that, actually, yours and my job is such a great example of words and how it affects people, right? Uh, a lot of uh, it, the whole thing with like Yano is that people don't like her attitude because she's very straightforward and she can be very mm -mm -mm, what people feel mean about it, a little bit rude about it, and so people don't like her compared to someone like Hime who puts on a mask, says really nice words, makes people feel happy, makes people feel good about themselves. And so, you know, people tend to point towards Yano as the villain just because of her attitude, just because of her words. And that kind of goes with Nauka as well. And that kind of goes with, again, Victoria. That kind of goes back with Emily. And, and, and so, look, I want, if, if there is one thing that I want to put onto other people in terms of just my, you know, philosophy and what, what I, what I think, right? For what I want you guys to do is to, at the very least, you know, if you see these types of characters, I, I just want you to put aside their, 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 their low meanness. So I want you to put aside the way that they, they just say whatever the fuck they want, even if it hurts other people's feelings. I, I just want you to put aside that anger that, that you're going to get initially from them. And I just want you to think about what makes them tick, right? I, the whole thing, uh, again, if there's one thing that I, I hope that I'm able to get through with, uh, with you guys eventually, is that not that I want you guys to like them, Right? No, I don't want you guys, I don't want to force you guys to like these type of characters. I just want you to understand what makes them tick. I just want you to understand why they are the way that they are. And often, it's most likely insecurities. And they're pushing down their insecurities by pushing other people down. <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's truly all I want. Why did I go on this fucking rant? <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're finally done with Mika. For the most part. 
and uh, we're, we're gonna head on over to uh, Mitsumi with the sports day being out here and such and Mitsumi wanting to give some pickled veggies to Shima and the team but she didn't really realize what she I, I wrote my notes that says that she didn't realize how popular he is but it's it's more like she knows that he's popular it's just that this is her first time ish uh, where she sees his popularity uh, on full force right and she just <laughs> and, and we know that Mitsumi has been trying to learn uh, more about people right more about what they think and such right she's trying to do that and so she sees that this is not a good time to to go and give uh, her, her pickled veggies to Shima right and she decides that she's not going to do it she's going to uh, she, she's going to leave and she's gonna uh, she's she's gonna leave him alone, <laughs> and it, it's very fun because uh, we've got Mika who goes and says, "Wow, it seems like she's able to read the room after all." Right? Very surprising. She's growing as a character. Wow, <laughs> very much surprise. And then there's this whole thing with uh, with fucking Shima, where, where everybody's all everybody's all cheering him on instead of tossing. He could have tossed it, right? But he saw you know, that his friend is here, his Yama is here, so he gives him the ball and get lets him have the uh, the highlights, right? <laughs> uh, he, he knows that this boy, he has made it known that he's out here to uh, look for his love. <laughs> he's out here trying to find a girlfriend, so he's just being a nice guy and trying to help him by giving him the highlights, but it just backfires because they're not really thinking about Yamada at all. They're just thinking about how like, wow, Shima's such a nice guy, giving his friends, uh, giving his teammates a time to shine because they're all newbies compared to him. <laughs> God, dude, such is the suffering of a hot boy. <laughs> But in the next scene, we see Kanechika again, who's handing out rice ball. He's he's not an athletic guy, so he's helping out in other ways. So very nice. But he makes a comment about Shima, where he, <laughs> you know, the, the way that they did this, they they didn't show his eyes, so it's very interesting. And he just goes and he says, Shima Kun must be lonely. Well, I've never been popular, so I'm just guessing. Right, the the he may act the same as he always does, but maybe people tend to keep their distance from him. He's, he's, he's just so fucking hot. People put him on a pedestal, right? The the struggle of a hot person. <laughs> I just can't make friends. <laughs> And Mitsumi has never thought about this before. We got to hear her low insight where she had thought, well, Shima is Mitsumi's first friends, which uh, I, I've got to correct because I was saying that uh, Mika was her first uh, was her first friend, technically. He's her first girlfriend, but it was Shima who asked for Mitsumi's contacts first before Mika came in and asked for Mitsumi's contact because she's just like, whoa, 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 hold on a second there, right? <laughs> So, just a small correction on that. But as Mitsumi was thinking about how Shima is her first friend and she considers him a good friend, she wasn't sure if the feeling was mutual. So she felt a little lonely because of that. But she hadn't thought of the fact that perhaps Shima felt lo could feel lonely as well. And that makes her think, why did he ask me to be his friend in the first place? Which, I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. It's definitely not one of the uh, typical scenario of a hot and popular person who likes you, who likes you because you treat them like a normal, regular person. <laughs> and it, 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 it's nice because we we see how it, it it is throughout this whole throughout this whole series where even though Mitsumi doesn't know about Shima at the time, didn't know about uh, Shima's pass as a child actor and even though he transferred to a school where other people don't really know that he was a child actor they still put the, all the other girls still put him on a pedestal because he's just so hot and nice and kind and, and whatever and he's also athletic oh my god he's the full package right so they, they put him on this pedestal but not Mitsumi right Mitsumi has been the one person who talks to him like he's a regular person even after she realized that he was a child actor she didn't act anything uh she didn't act any different towards him right she's still the same there they, they had that nice bonding moment between the two of them and we've got mitsumi again who says hey once you find your dreams and once you're once you go and fucking do it whether you fail or not we're gonna go out and eat 
exactly what Fumi did to her. And so it, it, it's, 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 it's very nice. Very, very nice in terms of their relationship. So Mitsumi, so after the game, so after the game, Mitsumi decided that she's going to cheer on Shima and she's going to give him the pickled veggies in the end, right? She's, she's decided that's what she's going to do because perhaps Shima is feeling lonely and she wants to be there for him. Very nice. And, <laughs> and there's this dynamic that I just love. And, and, and with uh, after Mika talking about like, oh man, I wouldn't be able to do that, right? If there's one thing about Mitsumi, she's she's really strong, and this uh, the, the the fucking group of girls is just like, oh, why does it sound like you like Shima too? <laughs> and Mika had to be like, whoa, 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 hold on, I, I don't like him, all right, all right, maybe he's hot, that's that, that's fine, he, he's totally on all that, but we've only known each other for two months, I don't know. <laughs> And I, I love the friend group who are just saying like, oh man, even Mitsumi is thinking about how they're only good friends, right? Between her and Shima. And they're talking about like, oh, but they're so tight though, right? They're such a tight knit, uh, tight knit friend. Tight knit friend? I was going to say tight knit group, but is two people considered a group? I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, in terms of this dynamic, I actually really like it because we usually have the usual issue of oh he's so popular he's so hot nobody else can have him right so we're we're gonna have a fan club and if if you this random person who decided that you're, you're gonna try and get close to him we're, we're gonna fucking uh, we're gonna fucking roast you <laughs> that that whole spiel of being popular so like you earn the ire of the uh of the opposite sex so i like that we, we've also been seeing it in the other episodes too where the girls are seeing mitsumi and shima together and they're just kind of like wow these two looks really nice together and there's really isn't that feeling of like the whole idea of like jealousy perhaps that could be sh that that could be found outside of the classroom but i like that the classroom that they're in that they're able to uh, they're, that they're able to just be like, yeah, you know, Shima's hot and all that, but it seems like Mitsumi might be uh, out here to, you know, maybe Mitsumi might be out here to fucking reel him in. <laughs> so I, 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 I like that attitude. It's just very fun, very different. But also it kind of shows that Mitsumi isn't just your out of the, uh, run out of the mill type of girl, right? Kind of like uh, some other types of uh, characters that we see in 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 other rom-coms right even if it's just like the the typical guy right instead of like being in the girl position right the typical guy who's just fucking normal <laughs> and and, and the, somehow they're, they're out here uh being able to get into a relationship with like the the most hot and popular girl or, or whatever and, and so it, it, it kind of gets that feeling sometimes too, even when like the, the gender is switched. But here with Mitsumi and with the class, they know that she isn't some run out of the mill girl. She's a little weird, but she got the credentials, the backup uh, to back it up, right? She's the smartest kid in the class. She ranked top 10 in like the previous exam or whatever, whatever the, the, the teacher had mentioned previously. So the the class knows that if we're talking about how like uh the the whole thing of like oh you're she he's too good for you except the the both of them are on the same level <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of worth i guess now that's the only thing in my head right now god i felt so confident after this episode has finished and i was writing down my notes and i was just like yeah i i know exactly what i'm going to talk about and then I just, I just fumble through everything. <laughs> but yeah, we've got yet another of Mika's thoughts towards the end of all of this. And uh, as the, you know, as the girls were thinking about like, oh, Mitsumi's still thinking about how they're just good friends and oh, but they're really tight. And so here we have uh, Mika who acknowledges that, well, or, or knows, she knows that Shima likes Mitsumi, right? Because she says... Uh, they're not wrong, but when you fall in love, sometimes it's because you find something in them that you don't have. And maybe, right? Maybe, just maybe, whatever it is that Shima-kun wishes he had, she might have it. <laughs> she might just have it. I have a feeling about it, right? I, I, got, I got a feeling. <laughs> That's the feeling I get. So, 
that's nice. I, I like that Mika kind of comes to that understanding. I kind of didn't really feel like she was really here for like some sort of uh, love trying or anything uh, because she did say that she wanted to do an investigation. Albeit it was still was an investigation. She was really literally interfering with her own investigation, but whatever. But you know, this is just her doing her little investigation on whether uh, whether Shima is actually just a nice guy or he's just being a nice guy to other people. <laughs> that that thing that she had said. So I guess in terms of that, I, I suppose when uh, when Mika said that to Mitsumi, she wasn't really lying. She actually felt that that's what she felt like was her truth. So. Okay, I take back with what I, what, what, what I was saying about like, oh, did she never lie? I don't know about that part. Okay, so, yeah, she was saying her truth. <laughs> Which I suppose is different from lying. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like the final speech and it just brings us more thoughts about Shima-kun and... Uh, sorry, did I just call him Shima-kun? Whoops, I was, looking at the, I was looking at the quote. Going back to him and Mitsumi's low alone time, right? Their bonding moment. And that that thing that that Shima wishes he had, Mitsumi has, and perhaps it's that feeling of passion. We know that he is listless. He is wearing the I don't care crown because he doesn't want to have uh, in that moment of weakness that he told to Mitsumi, right? He can't he, he can't handle that burden. He can't handle that expectation. That's a lot. So here is Mitsumi who has this burden, who has this expectation. And she's going headstrong into it. So he, he admires her for that. And we kind of see that in the first episode too. Where even though she sucks at running. Absolutely suck. And I think he had asked. I, I, I believe he had asked her like, hey, you want, you need help, right? You need help to, you know, I'm going to help carry you to, to fucking school or whatever. Was that the case? I'm going to have to look at episode one again. I'm, <laughs> Or else I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> But I believe he had offered her help, but then she didn't, right? On her own accord, she's going to she's going to run despite her just absolutely dying. Okay, so she fell down, <laughs> her shoes fell off. He asked, "Are you okay? I'm fine." No, he didn't ask. No, no, he didn't. He didn't ask. Uh, he didn't ask her for uh, if she needed help. She just asked. He just said, "Are you okay?" And then, and, and okay, and then she she took off her socks and her shoes and socks and she she ran for it. Okay, okay. It's that feeling that that caught Shima to uh, follow after her, right? Where despite this adversity that she's going through, despite all this 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 horribleness that all, all this uh, uh, all the bad things that had happened to her <laughs> during her first uh, first day, she's still pushing forward, right? And he got to see it again where when she went up to take the to do the speech and she forgot her uh, she forgot her she forgot her sheet of paper you know her her, her speech <laughs> she ends up reciting it line by line without needing to uh, uh, without needing it there so that passion that straight uh, that 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 straightforwardness right that feeling of I'm going to continue right I'm going to run forward despite all this bad things that's going on or all these bad things that I'm going to experience. I'm going to continue running while we know that Shima, who is currently wearing his don't I don't care crown, he he is turning the other way, right? He doesn't want to do it. So he kind of goes and he says like, oh, I don't uh, I don't really care all that much. Right. All these other things. It's whatever. Right. I just take one things at a time. And so as we know, he doesn't want to hand he, he can't handle that burden. And so, again, yeah, yeah just, just seeing Mitsumi, who's headstrong and is able to go through this, despite all the bad things, that's he, he fucking wishes. <laughs> you wish, boy, you wish. You wish you had it. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's basically all that I have. I apologize for this horrible, horrible mess of a discussion. But, hey, at least it wasn't the discussion from episode two, am I right? <laughs> But yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, uh, again, you give me more of Mika and I will fucking eat it up. <laughs> 10 out of 10 episode. <laughs> it's my favorite episode now. <laughs> I don't know, maybe something else will, will come and, and, and I'll be like, this is my favorite episode. But until then, <laughs> yes, more Mika. <laughs> but all right. All right. 
If I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next episode.